The only good run, Jeremy, is a dead run, Jeremy. The mobile infantry made me the man I am today. In the mobile infantry, you get to shower with women, fully nude. Would you like to know more? Johnny. Johnny. Sorry, Mr. Adler. Pay attention. Now, here in history and more philosophy, we've explored the decline of democracy with social scientists brought the world to the brink of chaos and how the veterans took control and imposed stability that has lasted for generations since. You know these facts. Why are only citizens allowed to vote? You. Uh, it's a, it's a reward for citizens get for doing federal service. No, no, nothing given has no value. When you vote, you are using political authority. Authority is force. And force, my friends, is the supreme authority from which all other authority derives. My mother says violence doesn't solve anything. Oh, really? And what would the founding fathers of Hiroshima say? They probably wouldn't say anything at all. Hiroshima was destroyed. That is correct. Naked violence has settled more conflicts than anything in history. The notion that it says otherwise is laughable. You, tell me, if any, what is the difference morally between a citizen and a civilian? The difference lies in the field of civic virtue. A citizen accepts the personal responsibility for the safety of the body politic, if it need be, which is his life. The civilian does not. Exact words from the text. But do you believe it? Do you know it? Is it something that you're willing to die for? Young people from all over the globe are joining up to fight for the future. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part, too. <laughs> They're doing their part. Are you? Join the mobile infantry and save the world. Service guarantees citizenship. Sir, I don't understand. What's the point of having a knife in a nuke fight when all the enemy has to do is pull a trigger? Put your hand on that wall, trooper. Sir? Put your hand on that wall. Uh, uh, the enemy cannot uh, push the button uh, if they cannot use their uh, hand. Uh, Medic. Wow, admin, I bet they've made you a LARP team commander by now, haven't they? They have. You deserve it. I do. Isn't it beautiful? Just like you. I love it so much and... I love you so much. That's a problem. I want to stay out here. I want to become king of the Pacific Northwest and... That doesn't leave a lot of time for us, Admin. Please continue to LARP with me so I know we're friends. Isn't it funny how... When they rip your heart out, they still want to stay friends? Every day, federal scientists are looking for new ways to kill bugs. The average steel target isn't too smart. Take out one of its limbs, and it's still 80% effective. The trick is, go for the nervous system. That'll put it down for good. Would you like to know more? I'm from Buenos Aires, and I say kill them all! We break net now and take you live to Clendathu, where the invasion has begun. Ah! Off! We gotta get out of here! Crisis for humankind. Fleet officials admit they underestimated the arachnids' defensive capability. Attention on deck! Now listen up. This is for all you new people. Everybody fights, nobody quits. If you quit, I'll kill you myself. Do you get me? We get you, sir! Welcome to the Roughnecks. Admin's Roughnecks! We got a new Sky Marshal and a new battle plan. We're gonna clean out the systems outlying Clendathu one planet at a time before we hit Tango Urilla. You want to live forever? Take her!
Join the Federation. All across the Federation, everyone's doing their part. Companies such as LAS Concealment, providing citizens and civilians the proper tools and equipment they need to stay safe no matter where they are. We never know where an arachnid threat may come from, so LAS Concealment allows you to keep that handgun close to your body for when you need it most. Now granted, a handgun isn't something I'd want to use against a arachnid. LAS Concealment, they're doing their part, are you? Listen up, I expect the best, so I give the best. Here's the beer. Here's the entertainment. Have fun, that's an order. We have the ships. We have the weapons. We need soldiers. Soldiers like Lieutenant Michael Mayfield and Captain oh, Garanthos. I'm doing my part. Soldiers like Lieutenant Administrative Results. Come on, you apes! You want to live forever? Do your part. Fight for the Federation. Citizens and civilians, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Lieutenant Administrative Results of Administrative Results Roughnecks. Today we're going over the Springfield Hellion. Now before we do that, gentlemen, I know, and ladies, I know you're on the toilet watching this. I know you're either drinking your coffee, consuming your beer. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. It helps me out, but most importantly, above all else, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Your comments are a sacrifice to the Federation. We have the war on bugs. Okay. So today we are going over the Springfield Hellion. I, I gotta take the helmet off though. The helmet's a little bit much. God! I can hear like my own thoughts in the helmet. Nuke them all. <laughs> all right, gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, the Talking Ball Clava. Today we're going over the, like I said before, the Springfield Hellion. Now, you may have noticed I added the EOTech and a little Surefire on there. Well, you know what? I realized I landed on Clendathru once before. Didn't have the proper illumination devices on my weapon light. How am I going to hit those freaking arachnids? Okay, so that's a real quick, you know, learning point. Hey, that's the reason why there's stuff on your gun. I always wondered what it'd be like if Starship Troopers had YouTubers within their realm. Here we go. Here, check it out. Ready? Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Bug Slayer 69 here. Today uh, we're going over the kit I use in Operation Clendathu. We lost a lot of good guys, but. Uh, you know, we came out on top against those bugs, all right? Now, what's the ultimate goal of rocking it? You know, I, I had a lot of guys and buddies that died in Clendathu, and then when we jumped into um, Planet AZ, uh, you know, we also lost a lot of guys, but hey, we put, we put boot to ass, you know, against those bugs for our Federation. I realized, you know what, hey, if they're gonna give us these new rifles to run against the bugs, I would rather have a red dot, so I managed to score one from the armor, okay? You may be wondering, hey, the armor looks a little bit different, so let's talk about the kit before we really dive into the gun. So the kit I'm running, this is the uh, Gen 2 armor given to us by the Federation, of course. So when you join up, you'll go through basic and all that. And then once you get out, you will have uh, your standard issue kit. You know, you're responsible for it. Helmets haven't changed too much. This is the helmet. Nothing too crazy, right? Standard issue Federation helmet. That's how many bugs I'm on. So uh, killed quite a few arachnids. You know, only, only good bugs, a dead bug. So uh, the kit is a little bit Gen 2. Newer stuff, newer issued combat uh, clothing. So this has been, you know, a few iterations going on through, uh, you know, the war on the bugs, right? MI does the dying, fleet does the flying. So we've hit a few different planets. The Federation's learned. Uh, we were originally tailored usually towards, you know, rebels and outlying colonies for combat when you join the Federation. Uh, but this one, you know, when you're fighting bugs, it's a little bit different, right? And especially on these heavy desert planets. Um, I got stationed out on this planet, you know, it kind of looks like the, the desert of Arizona. So it's a little bit of home to me and I feel comfortable operating in this kind of environment, okay? So with the kit out of the way, you know, talk about it real quick. I guess got my got my standard issue Federation mag pouches, and then I have uh, my med kit right here. You know, the med kit kind of seems redundant, so a lot of times guys will use that to hold snacks and stuff like that. It's just when a bug gets a hold of you, it's you're gonna essentially die. They don't take prisoners, okay, and for you know they don't really leave wounds that are pluggable, if that makes any sense, right? Usually they're, they're snipping off uh, large extremities of your body and or cutting you in half. So, uh, you know, the med kit is essentially like useless for what we do, uh, unless you get into one of their med tanks, which can kind of fix you up. We're looking for some kind of brain bug. I had an old lieutenant, uh, Johnny Rico, he got, you know, impaled in the leg and then they got him into a back to tank thing and he was good to go. So that's like your big chance, but the odds of surviving that is, well, it's slim to none. Okay. So let's talk about the new issued rifle. Um, my unit got issued the Springfield Halion. It's an old earth design, but a lot of new things going on with it as well. Like I was saying earlier, I threw an EOTech EXPS3 on there and a Surefire M300. You know, when you start fighting on these operations at night, um, you want to see the bugs you're shooting at, okay? So one thing I'm not a big fan of on these new rifles is going to be the safety. It's not terrible, but it's not great. Uh, it's, it's a weird safety in the sense like 
it's just different. It's not like it's, it's not bad, but when you know the safety, you know what it is, right? So it's a little bit goofy in that sense. And then I guess going on the similar vein, the things I don't like is gonna be the mag release and the bolt release. The mag release, yet again, these aren't terrible functions and controls. They're just not optimized. Um, compared to the other bull pups I've run before. The biggest thing being the mag release is like, eh, and the, but the bolt release is kind of like, what the what the F is going on? Because you're essentially doing a little, a nipple twist right there, right? So that's that's how you drop the bolt. Well, uh, it's, it's, it's just different. Now, the cool thing is this gun is ambidextrous, so you can switch it out if you do some internal swaps on the guts, and you can either have it ejecting left or right side. That's a good thing when you're the Federation, because you have to supply a lot of young soldiers. You know, you don't know what background they're from, where they're coming from. You may have a bunch of lefties, a bunch of righties, and, well, hey, they all need rifles to go fight and do their duty to become a citizen in the Federation, okay? So that's very important. Interesting thing I like about this is it does take, you know, standard pistol grips for, you know, usual ARs. That's a very nice little uh, bonus from what I can see. Now, keep in mind, you know, guys, I'm not, a, I'm not an expert within the Federation. I'm not an armorer. I, I just did a little bit of time on a few different outlying planets. I'm good at killing bugs, and I like talking about guns. I like talking about, you know, the gear that we use in the service of, you know, the Federation. But, uh, you know, I'm not an expert. So take everything I say and do here with a grain of salt. So that's just my big disclaimer real quick. You know what I mean? Pop-up iron sights are not too shabby. I actually like these. They're pretty cool, like good textile, good feel on these. Looks like good machining, you know, of iron sights. And of course, you got your adjustable gas tube up here. Overall, not that bad little rifle. Now, I don't want to go too much into the history of this rifle. One, because I'm a big champ and I'm going to ruin the history of it. There are other channels out there that can go much more in depth. Forgotten weapons, tactical consideration who let me borrow this rifle. Thank you, Mike, for letting me borrow the rifle, sir. And they can kind of talk about it more. Now, Springfield did not offer to send me one, even though I wish they did. I did reach out and said, hey, who around here do I have to ask nicely? It's gonna get plenty of Starship Trooper LARP time, but nothing of that, of course, happened, so it's kind of a bummer. But hey, whatever, beggars can't be choosers, and we're out here making the Starship Troopers video. Anyway, now, where does this rate on my manipulations, weapon handling? I think it's fine. You know, we were actually running it without that weird Starship Troopers helmet. It feels good. It feels good to get behind. It's a comfy bullpup. I like that it's got an adjustable stock. That to me is very, it's cool for a bullpup. So I think it's pretty slick in that aspect. Got a little cheek riser. You know, I mean, if this is something you want to run nods with, I think it's very doable. So I, I don't mind it. And then you got, of course, the M-Lock rail. I, I don't mind it. My thing is, of course, the trigger is a bullpup trigger. So you're always going to have to deal with that. It's not that great. So if you look at this, right, if we're going to pull the trigger down and do a little trigger squeeze, Right, that's how much travel you have. And then, boop, that's like your trigger pull right there. So it's kinda kind of goofy. And I know Garantham has better words for it, but this is my take, the hard and fast take. When I landed on Clendathu, there was one thing I wished I had, night vision. Nocturne Industries is doing their part across the Federation supplying young Federation troops with the tools they need to see in the dark. Head on over there and check out Nocturne Industries. Tough, rugged, reliable. They'll get you to where you want to go. Nocturne Industries, they're doing their part, are you? I do like all the cutie sling points around the gun. Makes it easy for slinging up a gun. One, two, three. Makes it a little bit easier for getting that sling on there for running cutie sling when you actually are training and not just LARPing Starship Troopers. I wanted to get this gun on the channel mainly so I could just make a bunch of Starship Trooper references because I do love the movie Starship Troopers. Fun fact, when it came out back in 1997, it wasn't necessarily a huge hit here in the States. It, I think a lot of people saw it as like, why are we promoting space Nazis? But it was like a satirical on war and you know, the, the constant meat grinder that nation states have of making money off the military industrial complex by sending young people off to fight and die in never ending war. So really ahead of its time considering it came out in 97 and then we had the global war on terror. So I'm not trying to get like political, political, but it's like, there's interesting parallels there. Take it for what, take it for what it's worth. You know, I'm not like a, a poli sci major, so w whatever. That's essentially it guys. I just wanted to do a hard and fast video. I, my goal was making this video I wanted to make more references about Starship Troopers, make more LARP than, than talk about the gun, if I'm being honest. And you know what, if that bugs you, I don't care. It's my channel, I can do what I want. So uh, if, if, if you wanna start your own YouTube channel, by all means, get out there and get after it. Gentlemen, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Your comments are a sacrifice to all 
the soldiers we lost on Clindathu, rest in peace. If you want to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, Patreon. Patreon's an excellent way to support the channel. They knew I was doing this LARP long before any of you did. They're going to see the video first, and we get to chat, and there's a Discord, so it's a good time. Now, merchandise is also an excellent way to support the channel. One sec. Sell so, merchandise on the website, so go ahead, snag yourself a nice salty AR Co. hat, and you too can be dripping in swag, and maybe the girls will start to actually like you. Gentlemen, as always, stay easy, stay breezy. I will catch you on Planet P. And never show uh, in the propaganda when you actually do miss the target. It happens. Your average chill target isn't too smart. Aim for one of its limbs. 86% effective. Yeah. Take out one of its limbs, it's still 80% effective. Okay, here we go. The average, the average steel target isn't too smart. Take out one of its limbs and it's still 80% effective. I uh, unironically can't aim with this helmet <laughs> setup. I should have brought a red dot, this is a bad idea.